Hi, this is Andrew Park, and this is the first video uh, out of several videos about the use of frameworks in using data in your advocacy. So one of the problems that we face when we use data in advocacy or when we launch research projects is that they can be kind of complicated and they can uh, produce a lot of documents, a lot of explanations, and you need to know when you're trying to advocate what is going to be your first approach? You've got 10 minutes on a panel. You can send one email to an advocacy target. You've got one phone call or one meeting. In your limited space, what do you say? Do you send the email with six attachments and lots of content and really expect them to go through it all? Uh, you need to figure out how to make your initial presentation and initial advocacy approach and how to narrow things down. So what I'm suggesting is that the way that you do that is by understanding the framework that your advocacy target uses. And I'm going to group frameworks into two groups. One is frameworks that people use in their professional lives and frameworks that they use uh, that are dependent upon their connection to LGBTI uh, communities and LGBTI issues. So, with regard to uh, personal frameworks, here's just an example of some that I'm talking about. People that use a framework of religion would look to God and Scripture as a source of guidance and truth and how to make decisions. And that's really what we're talking about. How do people uh, incorporate information in order to make decisions themselves, and what do they value in terms of representing the truth? And so this is a big question when you're dealing with data because sometimes it can fit into frameworks, sometimes it, it doesn't. Another framework is the framework of the law. And there people are looking to structure and process, what is permissible, what is not permissible, how do you resolve um, conflicts, or the framework of economics. There you're weighing costs and benefits. Uh, you're looking at the efficient use of resources to achieve a good. Uh, the political framework, who makes decisions, who has power, uh, who is able to achieve different kinds of reform. Um, epistemics, I would put researchers in the category of epistemics, which is how do we understand what's truth? What is knowledge? What's the difference between opinion, a fact, a belief, etc.? So understanding this will help us know what we need to include in that five minutes of a presentation or that three paragraph email. So to deal with frameworks, uh, there are two assumptions. The first assumption is that uh, people have different priorities and view information differently according to the framework. And the second one, which is the important one here, is that people who remain in a field or in a profession tend to adopt the frameworks that are common in that field or profession. So this is where I'm about to engage in huge generalizations that I'm sure will uh, uh, irritate some people, but um, this is at least a starting point for you to kind of narrow down some decisions on how to use data in advocacy. So the professions I wanted to talk about that you might run into are uh, lawyers and human rights NGOs, uh, development agencies and their employees, uh, particular research professions, uh, economists, public health folks, uh, anthropologists, researchers in general, PhDs, uh, and uh, folks with uh, research as part of their job, also media, and then just the kind of politically aware, socially aware public. So I'm going to go down each of those in the next video and talk about what kind of frameworks we can expect to see from these different groups of people, and that will guide us on how to make that first advocacy approach with our data.